All right. It's working. Thanks to Thomas for helping me uh, along. You know, he's remotely viewing and seeing what it looks like before we hit the button and uh, make it live again. I, thanks for all, to all of you for uh, hanging in there and going along with this. I realize it's, it's well, I, yeah, I feel frustrated. So it's already almost time for the normal stream hour to be over. And here we are just getting started. So I shouldn't waste any more time. We already said hello. We already talked about 343 Labs. I can't go a full hour now. I've got to move along and do family things and I have other stuff scheduled today. So it'll be a little bit short. I apologize for that. You know, I really want to get into this stuff with you. But without further ado, here's what we're doing. What we've been trying to do all this time. Now, I said it's Electro Saturday today. And I have here in front of me or on the screen next to me. So I have these huge hands, right? My hands are abnormally large. You can see that, right? So <laughs> actually, they're not. Um, this is a Roland SH01A. And uh, it is the boutique version of Roland's very famous SH-101. The SH-101 is one of my favorite synths for making techno and electro and electronic music in general. It's a mono synth. It's got a built-in sequencer. It has a very distinctive sound. It's, I'd say, up there with the 303 in terms of a distinct character that you can recognize instantly. And it is all over electro sounds. The kinds of sounds that this thing is good at making is so... I mean, okay, honestly, any synth, any synth is good for making electro. Don't get me wrong. But there's just a, this is one of those synths along with like, say, a sequential Pro 1 or, you know, there's some other classic 70s, 80s era analog synths that are just perfect for classic electro sounds. This is one of them. And what I'm going to do, and I'll go as long as I can, maybe, you know, I was going to try to build up like, couple drum sounds, a bass sound, some weird noises, a lead sound, and, you know, try to get a groove going. Um, you know, we may not get to all of that now, but that's what's happening. Um, those of you who are listening on a laptop or a phone probably heard nothing but a little click at that point. You definitely want to be listening on nice speakers or on good headphones to hear the bass in this uh, sound. And uh, I don't know. Let's get in here into Ableton Live and build up some simple electro-oriented sounds and instruments. So I started with a kick drum. This is where I'm at. Right, really simple. I'm using the filter resonance all the way up to create a sine wave and I'm doing envelope modulation to shape that the pitch of that sine wave. And um, I've got it tuned to about, if you look at my uh, spectrum here, when it, you know, it starts up high and it sweeps down really fast. It's like a pitch modulation, right? Using that decay time on the envelope. And it's sweeping down to about 40 hertz, right? A little lower than like your typical 50 hertz, 808 or 909 fundamental. Let's shape that a little bit. Oh. So yeah, it, it, it does have that laser zap kind of effect, you know, and if I, if, if I make that higher, we get the chirps, we get the, the simple laser blast. Go even lower. So this is like drum synthesis 101, basically. Pitch modulated sine waves. All right. So I'm going to leave that for a second. Now, this was just a starting point. The workflow here is, you know, I've got MIDI out going into the synth, and I've got audio coming back into the audio interface using an external instrument, right? Ooh, it, right there. You can see that's how it's routed. And I'm just going to 
fool around, make some simple sounds, capture it the audio, commit to that. I've already done that for a kick. So, you know, using live's audio routing, I have that external instrument on this MIDI track routed into another audio track just to record the loop. All right, so there's the kick. And I can use this as a loop, or I could also go in and just slice out one of those kicks and throw it in a drum rack or, you know, other drum sampler or use that as a starting point to do some further sound design. But I really want to just kind of use the unique character of the synth and not do too much processing as of yet. All right. Now, all right, I've, I'm committing to that kick sound and pattern. I can use that as a starting point for a track, or as I just said, I can chop this up and make new beats or further sound design with that simple sample. Let's try to do something snare or clap like, right? I'm going to change my MIDI to, I don't know, a two and a four. And now we're just hearing more laser zap. Let's make this noisy. Bring up the noise. There we go. All right, so that's just the unfiltered noise. I'm going to change. I had the envelope set to gate. And when you have the envelope on the 101 or the SH01 set to gate, it doesn't change the loudness with the envelope. The envelope is only applying to pitch or filter frequency. So I'm going to switch it back to envelope, and now it's going to actually change the amplitude, the volume. There we go. Sometimes that's all you need. Can we get this brighter? It's kind of as bright as it gets. This is definitely going to need some EQ at some point. What happens if we combine this with some filth resonance? Aha, there's the brightness. That's better. You know what would be a good uh, thing to do is just set up another audio track here. I'm going to route the audio from that external instrument. I'm just going to tweak this for a while and let things happen and get variations. Um, Okay. See, already that's like five or six different sounds. Get a little filter modulation in there. a little more resonance. These are going to be less snare-like and a little more zappy percussion-like. Oh. There's something I've noticed. This is a thing. This is a criticism of the boutique version of the 101, the SSH01. I don't know if you noticed when I was playing with the decay, right? It kind of goes from long to short as I slide it down. And there's a point where I get close to bottom where it jumps to like zero. Do you hear that? There's no in between. And sometimes I want that fine little fast decay time, but there's a spot where it just jumps. Maybe it's like a manufacturing error or something. I don't know, but all right. So far we're just playing with noise in the filter. What happens if I bring in some oscillation? I'm going to bring in a higher frequency and bring in there we go. Give it a little bit of a tone and maybe some very fast LFO modulation of the pitch. 
Now we're getting into kind of clangy metallic territory. I'm gonna go in and change my MIDI note higher. There we go. Nice and bright. to just improvise and record playing around now i won't stop to do this now but a nice thing that the sho1 can do is the lfo you can go into the settings and make it a high frequency oscillator instead of just an lfo and you can actually get into some fm really fast modulation and create some more complex tones but this is fast enough for now Look at this, I like this comment. This is absolutely true, I will admit it. It looks like Selway's body can't help but bounce to the beat. As Max Wilde would put it, the Selway sway. And yes, I am a slave to the rhythm. Y'all know that Grace Jones classic? Amazing. All right. All right, I think that's enough. I got a lot of different snare-like and zappy and noisy percussion sounds in there that I can mine and play around with. For uh, sake of time though, I won't take too much of it to uh, chop this up right now. I'll just go in and find a decent snare and stick with that and move on to the next sound. All right, so let's stop that recording. Stop the MIDI clip. Get this audio playing. Let's make a one bar, two bar, I think one, one bar loop and just scan through here and find something that sounds all right. Definitely gonna need to boost these sounds up a little bit. A lot in here. I kind of like these heavier ones with the with the modulation, the pitch modulation. Feeling that. I'm gonna pick the lower one. Although you could just have this be longer and have some variation. It's kind of going up in pitch a little bit in the second half. Let's process this just a little bit. EQ. Well, I didn't mean to do the channel EQ, but we'll just stick with it. All right. I could just take a shortcut and throw a drum bus on this. Now it's got slappy transients, which we want for a snare, for sure. All right, we'll leave that for now. I'll think about more effects later on. Let's do a hi-hat. I'm gonna make uh, just 16 notes to start with. Or actually, just so we have some space in between the notes. Let's do eighth notes, right? So I can shape the sound a little bit in between so I know what the, the release sounds like. That already sounds good. All right, let's get rid of all of that. That's not a hi-hat, but it's awesome. I should be recording this. I know I said hi-hat, but I like what I'm hearing. I might just have to use this, that's awesome. All right, we got our chirpy laser noises. Let's make it more hi-hat like. Now, this thing doesn't have a high pass filter 
and they, in order to make it sound like a convincing hi-hat, well, one, the shape has to be right. Very short. That's much more hi-hat-like. It needs a high-pass filter. I'm going to go ahead and throw an EQ on it already just to thin it out to make it sound more shiny. track. Make that a high pass filter. There it is. Throw in a little syncopation. So electro. All right, I like that. Let's play with the sound a little bit more. I'm bring, I got the resonance up high, and I'm looking for that kind of metallic ring on top. What happens if I bring in an oscillator? A little bit brighter, right? Although it's got a tone now. This is, again, where, like fast LFO modulation of the, the pitch is good. It would be even better if I had it in the audio range, but we're just using what we got. This is like an unmodified SH-101 here. Now, one thing I can play with also is the length of the MIDI notes. I've got a longer release time. And if I make the MIDI uh, note shorter, we're going to hear less of the decay and more down to the sustain and more of the release, and it's making like an open hi-hat. All right. Now, here's a comment. This is a good... Uh, 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 while we're, I was being picky about the SHO one before... Oops. Acid Bat said, well, it is a mono synth, but what I meant to click on was a May saying the faders are a bit small and sensitive. So yeah, the Behringer version of the 101 is definitely better for jamming. It's full size. I kind of wish I had one of those. I'm going to have to get one and do this all over again so you can really see what I'm doing because this is just, it's tiny. All right. I like this hi-hat pattern. I've got it to audio. But I want to get some more variations on the sound, so let's simplify this. Although accidentally making that variation was an interesting musical idea, so I'll record that too. All right, we'll simplify this further. Make it a little more ni noisy, less resonant, it's a little more sharp. What happens if I add some, just a little bit of uh, envelope mods to the fre filter frequency? Now let's add some LFO. Now we're getting into sound effects. It's not a hi hat anymore. All right, I'm gonna go ahead, make a new audio clip, start recording something different. Let's turn this into something else. All right, so I like this. The process of doing the simple sound design is also, you know, because I'm starting with MIDI that's playing patterns, it's also the process of making a new track at the same time. I love doing synthesis in the context of composing. It's more fun for me, and you get into a groove, right? And I start doing the, the sway thing, right? Okay. Please, please, please use that variation of the hi-hat before it was a hi-hat. Yes, I will. That's all recorded. I can go back and use any of it. I can. It's so important when you're just jamming and fooling around to capture stuff because you, 
you get all the you get the happy accidents. You get the stuff happening because it just when you're just fooling around and you're not stressed out, you forget you're recording and good things happen when you're lost in, in the music and in the creation. So I want to do some less percussive sounds, less, you know, effect sounds, and let's get into some more musical sounds, so like bass or lead. I think this desperately needs some kind of a bass sound. So I'm going to actually, before I do a MIDI sequence, I'm going to just play a little bit. Should, should You can hear, I can play the keyboards. Let's get this back to a more normal state rather than a chirpy hi-hat bird state right so let's get rid of the modulation from the lfo let's bring the resonance down the frequency up the noise down and let's get some oscillators going also all of that has been recorded with a high pass filter on it so let's get rid of that get to a lower octave that's where you want to be and let's get this sounding like a typical Pulse with mod, moving kind of electro funk bass line. How are we going to do that? All right, so we got the pulse with up. There we go. Oh. Right, that's where I want it. I want it dirty and nasty and twisted sounding, you know. Let's shape this a little, a little bit with the envelope. All right, I could try a sub oscillator. I don't know, that's really low. What does it sound like with some filtering? A little resonance. All right, I also want to fatten this up. Let's hear what it sounds like with some uh, compression or saturate. Actually, let's use the saturator. Let's see how that goes. We'll go into driving color. Turn on the saturator here. I want it to be brighter though. How are we going to get this brighter? Let's bring the envelope mod amount up. Now, I want it to be, I want to have that pluck. You know, I want that sharp, bright attack, but I also want it to sound louder. Let's try switching it back to gate. And that way, the amp again the amplitude is staying loud so even when the filter sweeps down it's not also bringing down the volume so it's definitely fatter that way all right uh let's go back i let me get a, a good high hat high hat loop in here before i add the bass i just want to have that groove going oh it sounds out of sync what happened uh-oh well, thankfully, live can help us fix that. You can see I have, I'm having a little bit of a, of a sync problem with this. That happens with, with uh, MIDI and audio sometimes. That's okay, though. I'm just sliding the transients over on the grid. Now, there's some wonky MIDI going on in there. All right, I think we're in the ballpark now. Maybe I need to be a, 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 a higher octave. I'm not sure. I need to think about it for a second. See, I was saying before about like finding the groove and then making the sound in the groove. I stopped, I kind of lost the groove, I made the sound, and now I have to reconnect to what I was feeling before. So, uh, Radioactive Man, yes. 
We love radioactive men around here. Keith Tenniswood. I was very happy to have him as a guest on the show last year. And uh, I don't know. Maybe he'll come back one day. We'll see. Cool. BPM. All right. Martin Crockett saying BPM is out 130 on the SHO1, 129 in Ableton. I'm not sending clock to the SHO1. The SHO1 is not doing the sequencing. It's being played only from Ableton Live. So that's not the reason why it went out of sync. The reason it went out of sync ha probably had something to do with the MIDI clock drifting while I was recording. And that is an issue. MIDI clock timing with live and audio with and then the audio is is a thing. It is an issue. Um people have made videos about this problem with getting your hardware and your MIDI in sync with the clock and the DAWs. So I'm not going to worry about it though. I'm just going to try to work with what I've got. And now what I'm going to do is shine up this hi-hat a little bit while I think about a bass line. Let's put a flanger on it. Let's put a, a, a reverb or something on the, on the snare. Too dubby. I don't know, maybe I like it better dry, I'm not sure. We'll leave it there. All right. I think what I'm going to do, I had the, uh, I had the envelope set to gate because I wanted to s loud, but now I feel like for the way I want to play it, Let's switch it back to envelope. Now it's got that nice tail on it. It's not just stopping suddenly. All right. Let's see what we can do. Get the preview on. Not bad. Simple, but sometimes that's all you need. It, and I like the call and response thing with Electro. It's all over it, where you have a short phrase and then some space and then another variation on that phrase, and then you can find another sound to throw in between them. All right, so I duplicated that, I added those extra notes, and then adding a variation at the very end. What happens if I get a little portamento going on this? All right, I need to have it. Now, I don't know if you notice here, but my little uh, switch for my portamento is broken. There we go. Right, this is coming together it's all right not groundbreaking but fun straight ahead kind of electro groove a little bit of detroit doppler effects influence very strong one i would say or a little you know you know the sound those of you who are into electro you definitely know this sound and you can do it all with one synth and a little bit of effects processing it's all you need nice what are you guys doing? Let's see what's happening in the chat here. Uh, I'm going to have to wind it down very shortly, I'm afraid. Maybe be able to slip in one more sound, but um, I'm already getting calls from the family wondering why I, I am not done already. So, you know, full disclosure. Let's see. What's happening? You guys are talking about Tractor and Ableton Link. That's right. 
Acid Bat says Doppler effect is my favorite ever. It's so good. It's so good. That's right. Thomas Berner is talking about, uh, we, I was mentioning before the, uh, the issue with the uh, MIDI sync and uh, drifting and stuff like that. Something like the ERM multi-clock is an amazing solution for that. It's a bit pricey, but if you're real serious about using hardware and clocks externally and getting, to, getting them to work with your computer and other devices, something like this is definitely going to help. So highly advisable to make that investment if you're going crazy trying to get your clocks, your beats from your external sequencers tight with your computer. Cool. All right, so it's your last chance for the giveaway. Uh, if you haven't already, I think it's probably at this point. I mean, we need to announce the winner. I've got to stop in a, uh, in a couple of minutes. Thank you, Virgin. Glad you like the bass sound. And Gomeo, nice comment. You're painting with sound. I assume you mean Mr. Selway. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. So, all right. And here we go. Another nice comment here from Dot Initial. ERM Multi-Clock is hands down the best gear in my studio. So, big, you know, plug from, for the ERM from Dot Initial. Nice. So, the winner, congratulations to the winner of our giveaway this week. Gator Ritmo, you have won a free 343 Pro session of, of your choice. So definitely, we'll hit you up. We'll follow up. You can see what's coming up and make your selection or just wait until you find something that you're real interested. You've got the credit. And all right, I'm going to quickly go back and check out this, uh, this sound here again or this, this groove here again, this bass that we're working on. What else could we do to this? All right. Modulating it going up and down is a little wacky. Let's try it faster. Yeah, it's right. So the waveform I'm using on the LFO is a downward sawtooth. So it's creating like percussive. It sounds like notes being re triggered. So not working on the mod there. Let's try do some keyboard tracking of the filter frequency. And that's going to make it so the, the, the high and low notes sound relatively like the filter frequency and the pitch stay kind of together. So that way, when I, even if I bring the cutoff down really low, when I play the high notes, you still can hear them. They don't get cut off. One more sound. All right, so I have to commit this. I should have, I made the mistake. I should have been re recording the audio of that the whole time. I broke my own rule. So, um, all right. Another audio track. Route the audio from the external instrument. Arm the track, hit record. And I'll play around with it for a minute. can hear like the pitch wobble is going <laughs> Whoa. all right i'm gonna bring that keyboard tracking down again yeah oh sawtooth wave I'm not even sure I'm in key or in tune anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's a little wacky now. I had it better before, didn't I? I'll leave it there. Looping. All right. What are we going to do for our last sound before I have to jet? 
something higher. Maybe just like a crazy, it could either be a melody, like a, a hooky kind of melody that works with or in contrast to the bass melody, or it could be like a fast, repetitive arpeggiator step, step sequencer-y kind of thing that's a little more noisy. Right. I'm just going to put in some random notes and see what happens. Because I like that same sound up higher. All right, faster rate on the LFO. Something like that could be cool. Let's do square wave. Now we're definitely Doppler effect. <laughs> now if you're careful, can adjust the amount of modulation of the pitch and get a an interval like a fifth or a fourth or a third or an octave You hear what I'm going for. Let's get rid of the portamento. That might sound good with some uh, reverb or delay. All right. I'm not even, I'm not trying very hard to write my melody right now. I'm just stabbing at the keyboard it's a little loud. All right. I should start talking about scales and music theory right now, but. Good. Let's do that. All right. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna settle with that. I like what's going on there. So um, I'm gonna record that. Where is that? Oh, I I know what I I just realized I made a dumb mistake. I, the I, I I thought I had the MIDI routed from the SHO one into Ableton Live, and it's not active. So let's just draw it in. That works too. And that way, I can just quickly draw in those notes and repeat that sequence, and it should be good. Now, hopefully, this I just realized like. I've been ignoring my master. It's been clipping the whole time. Hopefully it wasn't too loud and distorted for you guys. Now I got that sequence playing and I can play with the synth. And this is when I should start recording. And this will be the last thing and we'll be out of here. This is fun. Make it shorter. That's nice with a little of that jumbled square wave modulation of the filter. Sounds more complex that way. Play with the, the range and the octave, jumping up and down octaves. So many possibilities. 
All right. I think we made... I made my points. Definitely having fun with this today. I'm so happy that we finally, oh my God, after all of that trouble, getting started today. Thank you so much again for bearing with me and hanging around. Almost made an hour out of it. You know, if you combine all of the starting and stopping together, we actually went over an hour, but uh, actual solid content here for the last uh, 30, 40 minutes. So thanks to everyone who showed up today. Thanks to all of you who, I mean, really, just thanks again for sticking through the technical issues. It happens and we recovered and we made some simple, fun electro sounds kind of inspired by the Doppler effect sort of uh, vibe. And um, hope you enjoyed that. I really love doing this kind of like going back to the basics with just one synth, getting into what I can do just with this one synth. And then also, you know, whether you're into, into electro or not, you can and you're just learning about synthesis and sound design, like it, you can start to see, even just with a simple monosynth, all, all right, the S, SHO one can also do poly, you can do four voice, but I've just been using it as a monosynth, how much you can get out of it. Kick drum, snare drum, or other percussion sounds, hi-hat, bass sound, lead, from this one oscillator, simple synthesizer that's easy to learn and understand, and it, it's making totally genre-appropriate sounds for this kind of electro. So... That's going to be it for today. Congratulations again to our winner of the uh, pro session, 343 pro session of your choice. Uh, that's it. That's all. I'm going to go out and play in the snow now. I'm going to go pick up my kids and have a snowball fight. So see you next week, everybody. Adios. <laughs>